I'm continuing my series on rock facing and shaping stones. Now this is a church, it's called St. Lucy's. It's in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and it's got a facade that's built out of marble. We're gonna take a look at it. Well, we're walking up to it. The steps are marble. Uh, we got a little rock facing over there. Let's take a look at that first. You see how that's marble? And this is all rock faced. But the rest of the church over here, it's built in panels. And this is a different, different color marble, which came from a different quarries. And we could see where they put a couple patches in here. Marble's easy to disguise and to fix. And we're gonna go over here and we could actually see these four inch panels that the facade of this church was built out of. And you could see these, uh, these carvings basically how it was done we're gonna take a look at the railings so we're gonna walk up the steps it's a rainy day in March it was snowing today these are all built out of marble and marble has natural cracks in them and you can see you could actually put some white cement in there and disguise it this over here see what's built in panels you can see this down in other areas too someone kind of patched it up here we're looking at the railings and this is all planed. You can see how this was all planed on a planer. We get up here and then we have our solid marble pieces and you can see sometimes in the marble how some parts are harder than the others. So as it gets weathered, it, uh, the soft parts go away and the hard parts stay. We have some carvings up here of an angel. That would be something my buddy Wayne would be doing. They have uh, the name carved out, St. Lucy's, up there. I guess it would be the Apostles that they carved out. And we look up on top, and you can see the capitals, how that was all made. This whole church has like four inch panels. It was all built with masonry, and then the panels were attached to it. You can see how we have these little drop off and carvings up in here and the designs as it goes by for the arches. We're kind of on the side of the building where it ends. You can see the four inch panels as it goes up and then the building comes into brick where it's like a softer, this is almost like a sandstone where they did the rest of the building in, in sandstone and then they went to brick. So this video we're gonna get into some marble work. Now back in the 80s I worked on this mansion and here's some pictures of it and we did a lot of marble work and we're going to get into that as far as shaping goes we're going to start this video out with rock facing so here's a picture of a church in our area that used marble rock facing let's take a look at that first now here's a church in our area that's made out of a marble facade just like that we're going to take a look at it see everything is rock faced you can see even the corners here are rock faced and they have a thick one and then they come down they mix it all up and when we get to the corners here we see it's only four or five inches but this whole building is rock faced now I got a couple pieces of marble that was laying across the street basically in the mud but maybe the camera will uh, pick it up better this is basically rock faced this side this side isn't and we look on the back and this side isn't so when you go to lay stone you can't lay it like that you got ledges sticking out like I said you can't let the ledges stick out like that this part is rock face this part is rock face and when you put the cement on everything's even for your cement joint but this part right here is not rock face and this was abandoned this is a piece of junk let's just take our square like this and put our line in and then we're going to rock face it see that how we rock face that side and face it. 
Now when we put our stone on, the cement matches. We turn it around, we draw our lines, and I'm taking a guess here for, uh, so we could kind of speed it up. Get our pitching tool, and we rock face it. So that, basically, is a rock face stone and we got to do our corners careful not to break anything see that that's our rock face stone and if this was our cement joint the other stone goes right on top and the cement joint goes even that's why they rock faced it and it gave it a nicer look you're going to ask me Mike they went to four inches. Now in the old days, when you seen my video on Conway Castle, and you seen my videos on the pyramids of Egypt, and you seen my videos on the Great Wall of China, all of it was done like this. There's no rebar, there's no uh, wall ties, there's no concrete trucks. Everything was stone on stone with cement. Now let's talk about the new school way they started doing uh, block first and then they put the stone against it. This is probably they started doing this probably in the 20s to 30s when they start adding steel Steel's a nice thing, but it doesn't last Here's a piece of this rebar. I pulled out of a footer that was poured in 1972. It rots away This rebar it expands it breaks things up Here's some uh, wall ties. They rot away. I just took this out of a brick job about 15 years old but they would put wall ties against it. If it's wood, they nail it. Sometimes they have a system like this. And you've seen me do this on brick jobs where it goes like this. They bolt it to the thing and this goes on. And we did that on that marble job out in Jersey. Here's, a, here's me showing you how they did that. Then the next way they did it is we cut a groove in and we would put our wall tie in there like that and we'd either cement or epoxy it to hold it to a building. Let's see how we do this. Now what we're gonna do is we gotta make this go inside the stone. So we got a mark here, we got a mark here. We're gonna get a little grinder and cut a hole. We cut one hole there, we're gonna cut another one here. tie will go right in here like this. Now here's a little extra for you. This is a star chisel. When you ask me how did the old timers drill a hole? Well they just kept turning it like that and that's how the old timers would drill a hole in stone. Just so you know that. See that? Star chisel. So far we talked about rock facing and I gave you two examples. I showed you that church and then I showed you the base of that statue. That is what you call rock facing marble. Now we're going to get into shaping marble and we're going to go back to the church and I'm going to point at a little part that we're going to kind of duplicate. We're looking at the church St. Lucy's and we're looking at the piece now that we want to duplicate. So what we do is we get a pattern. You see this? We're going to get a piece of marble and we're going to make a pattern. Now let's go first to New Jersey and see how he was making a pattern for those arches. This is the marble right here. Oh, okay. And this is the pattern that we have to cut the marble to. And you can see that we cut the sides right here. And this is the part right here, this rounded part, that we can't cut with a saw because the saw is great. We got we to gotta keep Cut it and mold it like this. Now the same thing with this stone. I cut a pattern out. You don't rule, use rulers on your stone. You use rulers and lines on your pattern. And once you got your pattern and you want to make it right, you got to draw your line just like this. 
See that? That's the pattern. That's the way that stone has to go. And then we flip it around. Got to make sure we're right there. Make sure we're right there. We flip it around this way. And we make our pattern. Reverse it this way. Let's make sure here. Yep. Same thing. We look at our pattern over here. Same thing. We flip the pattern around. There's our pattern. Now we know that that's going to be our cut. This side and this side. You got to look around. So now we're just going to make a little line in it. This is what I call field work because usually when you arrive on a big job like that, the pieces are already cut and all you got to do is make them work. Sometimes they're too long. What happens when they're too long? Let me show you that. So sometimes though you got to recreate a piece because it's broke or something's wrong. So we're just going to recreate this. Now we got the basic outline of how this is going to get cut. Now if you got a pretty good eye, you could basically cut it. So, now we're getting in here where we want to be. Let's screw this down in here like this. Let's screw this like this. marble and it's got a couple flaws in it but not too bad so now we're just going to get our grinding tool and do this we're going to get ourselves a file a little filing and some sandpaper Sides off here, do a little grinding. And we got our piece. Well, I told you last video I was going to tell you a little story. Now, I was out there in Jersey working with those guys from Russia and Poland who knew how to do all the fancy work. Well, this is a little thing I tell all the politicians. When I was in the service back in the early 70s, Vietnam was still going on, the Middle East was still going on, and the Cold War was still going on. So part of our duties was to spy on the Russians. So one time off this anchorage in Somalia, we go to this Russian anchorage and we sneak up on them. Ba-boom, they shoot over the bow of the ship. So we're at general quarters, we got the helmets on, we got the life preservers on, we got the guns pointing at them, they got the guns pointing at us. So when I was working that job, I said, Peter, he was from Russia, what's the difference between Russia and America? He says, in Russia, 
You want to smoke cigarettes? Nobody cares. Russia, you want to drive an old junk car around? Nobody cares. Russia, you want to put an addition on your house? Nobody cares. Russia, you want to drink a gallon of whiskey? Fall down in the middle of the road drunk? Nobody cares, but you can't say anything. He says, in America, you could say anything you want, but you can't do anything. Bingo. Thanks for watching. Next video, we're going to do a little more in the sandstone and go from there.